very late, my phone's about to die, and I'm wearing this hat to hide my awful long hair. I haven't gotten a haircut in three months, but you know what? We're making content. Hello guys, gals, non-binary pals, and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Julia, and today I'm doing the MB Booktube tag. This tag was started by Crescent Moon Reads, so I will link to his original video down below, and I am so excited to get into this. So, as you all can probably tell from my channel title, I am non-binary and it's been easier to find books by and about non-binary authors and characters in the past few years, but there's still not a lot to go on. So if you have any recommendations, please let me know down below, but I will talk about some non-binary authors and characters in books that I've enjoyed that I've read. The first question of the tag is, name a book with an MB character. It says a book, but I'm going to recommend several. So first, I will talk about Nico from The Vela, which is a 11-part book from Serial Box written by Yoon Ha Lee, S.L. Huang, Becky Chambers, and River Saltman. Nico is a non-binary hacker, also the child of the leader of one of the planets in this galaxy, and they are one of the main characters and POV characters of The Vela. I talked about this book in my RPG PCs video a few videos back, and I mentioned there that it is a space opera about climate change on these various galaxies, immigration crisis, and both of the main characters are trans, so there is a trans woman and then Nico who is non-binary. And what's super interesting about Nico to me is that they are a very morally gray character, but written in such a way that you know that they're not being demonized. I don't want to spoil too much, but um, they definitely make some choices, but you fully understand where they're coming from based on the experiences that you get to see in the book. One of the authors of this book is an Abayan River Solomon, and Yoon Ha Lee is a trans man. I never felt like Nico was shown as morally gray because they were non-binary. It was just like another interesting aspect of their character. And also, moral grayness is kind of like a big theme of the Vela. It's a bit of a depressing book, but never in like a gratuitous way. Anyway, it's super interesting. And the next book that I want to recommend with a non-binary character is a comic, Mooncakes, written by Suzanne Walker and illustrated by Wendy Shu. The main character of Mooncakes is a hard of hearing witch, and her partner is a non-binary werewolf. So this book is very cute and soft, has good fall witchy vibes. They discuss the non-binary partner's gender identity in one conversation, and then everyone just accepts their pronouns and moves on, which is, I think, the best way to handle a trans character in genre fiction. Also, the collected webcomic On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden. I will never stop talking about this. I will hopefully get a copy of it for Christmas because I asked my family for it, but On a Sunbeam is a gorgeous sci-fi webcomic which is about a lot of things. There's an FF romance, it's about restoring architecture in space, but there's also a non-binary character on this crew of queer and non-binary folk. There's a lot of really great examples of found family in sci-fi. This is one of my favorite found families, and I really need to reread this comic, but the non-binary character here is from this like very insular, mysterious planet, and they sort of get dragged back to it by their family, their biological family, and then their ship family comes to rescue them, and th the art in this is wonderful. The FF romance is like kind of at the forefront of the flashback part of this book, but then the main story is taken up by this non-binary character's quest, and Wow, the art and colors in this book are just gorgeous and I can't recommend it enough. The next question is to name a book that is coming out or has come out in 2020 with a non-binary character. For this, I am going to recommend a book that I have not read yet. I've read the first few chapters but I haven't finished it. And that is The Vanishing Monuments by John Elizabeth Stinsey. The basic premise of this book is that the main character who is non-binary, their mother suffers from an illness and they're asked to come home and take care of her and so they return to their childhood home and they've not been back in decades since they left with their girlfriend when they were in their teens 
and have to deal with their mother and their family and coming back to kind of confront themselves when they were younger. I really want to boost this book even though I haven't read it yet because one, it has an non-binary character and author, but two, I don't use Goodreads much anymore, but from what I can tell on Goodreads, basically no one has heard of or read this book. I found out about it when I was scrolling through the LGBT tag on Edelweiss. So this book came out in, I think, May, so you should definitely try and get a copy of it and check it out if literary fiction is your thing. It's not always mine, I've been reading more lit fic this year, but I definitely want to read this one because of the non-binary character. The third question is to name an author who is NB and name their book. Again, I'm going to go with multiple here. First, I will talk about Something to Talk About by Meryl Wilsner. This is a wonderful FF contemporary romance written by Meryl Wilsner, a non-binary author. There are no non-binary characters in this book, but it is a sapphic romance. It was wonderful. I loved it so much. It takes place in Hollywood between a personal assistant and a writer slash actress. The personal assistant accompanies the writer to a red carpet event, and since this actress slash writer has never been with anyone before and they seem very close on the red carpet, this rumor springs up that the two of them are dating and complications arise from there. But this was exactly the contemporary romance that I've always wanted to read. Everyone was emotionally mature. There were some communication issues, but it was very slow burn, which I've seen other reviews say that that was a, to the detriment, but I really love slow burn romances. I don't like insta-lux, which is very common in the romance genre. That's fine, but I definitely enjoyed the slow burn in this book and the way that the kind of boss-assistant relationship developed in this book, because both of the characters were very conscious of the fact that one of them had power over the other, and so they were very careful about navigating that, and I just really enjoyed this book, so definitely read something to talk about. Next author that I'm going to recommend is J.Y. Yang and their Tensorate series. So this is a silk punk series of novellas. I've only read the first one. One of the main characters of the book is a trans man, and it is about the heirs to this empire and them growing up and their gender identities and the magic system and world building in this novella are super interesting. So much thought went into it. The best thing about novellas is when they pack like a series worth of content into 200 pages and this series definitely does that. I would like to read more of this series, but if you were interested in Silk Punk, I think the Tensorit series is really like the gold standard for that. Next, have to give a shout out to Pet by Akweke Amezi. That is the only book of theirs that I've read. I know that they had The Death of Deep of Odia come out this year, and then Freshwater came out a few years ago. Everyone on booktube has been talking about Pet. I just wanted to give a shout out to it, so you've probably already heard about that one. And lastly, I have to bring it up in every video if I can, An Unkindness of Ghosts by River Solomon. One of my favorite books of the year. It is astoundingly good. It's about a generational spaceship and how it has been divided into a caste system similar to the slaveholding South. The main character, Aster, <laughs> sorry, I'm getting really excited. Um, the main character, Aster, is a scientist, but also has to work in the fields of this ship, and she has... <laughs> Theo, okay. So Theo is the ship's surgeon, and Aster is his apprentice, so they also have a really beautiful friendship and romance between the two of them, and honestly, like, I can't even form coherent sentences talking about this romance. It got me so good and I just can't recommend this book enough. It was absolutely incredible, such an intense but necessary look at racism in a sci-fi society. There's just so much going on in this book. There's science, there is love, there is just an awful systemic racism that the characters have to face, but hot damn, this book is amazing. River Sullivan also wrote The Deep, which is based on a song by the band Clipping, about the descendants of pregnant 
enslaved women who were thrown overboard in the Needle Passage. They developed into mermaids and have formed their own underwater society, and the main character has been tasked with holding the memories of her society until once a year when she's allowed to release them, but this generational memory has taken such a toll on her that she can no longer bear it. So if that sounds interesting, and if you like books about generational memory and trauma, then The Deep is definitely for you. And the last prompt is shout out to three ND booktubers. So I'm going to shout out, first of all, Jessie at Bowties and Books, of course. I adore Jessie's content. They inspire so much of my reading. I would not have picked up An Unkindness of Ghosts without their recommendations, so I'm so grateful to them for that. They have such good taste and they're so great about boosting underrepresented voices in books. Next, I want to shout out a recent person that I started following, but I've just started devouring their content. That is Audrey at Perpetual Pages. I have to be careful watching their videos because I will add every book they recommend to my TBR. They're so good at hyping books. They especially love Cemetery Boys, which I'm listening to an audiobook right now, so thank you for that, Audrey. Definitely go check out Perpetual Pages. They are wonderful and recommend so many good books. And last is a booktuber that does not have a lot of followers, and I have only recently started following, but Amberino Face. They do content about uh, wrap-ups and their anticipated reads, but they're also non-binary. I definitely want to make a resolution to watch more of their videos because I have not yet. Alright, and that will do it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any non-binary authors, books, booktubers that you'd like to recommend, please put that in the comments down below. Also, if you watch this far, please comment with a pride flag. Alright, that'll be all for me today. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time.